It's time for a story. It was 10th grade. I was 16. I was naive. The weekend just started. But you know the weekend. It's never really the weekend because there's always that teacher that assigns you some load of homework so you can never really enjoy the weekend the way it was meant to be. For me, that was Mr. Hildman. You may have some science or math thing stuck in the back of your head, but for me, it was vocabulary. These vocab words were nightmares. They were nightmares. These are the type of words that really serve no purpose in day-to-day -day conversation. Like anachronistic, which means chronologically displaced. When am I gonna use that? The Doctor Who traveled back in time and therefore was anachronistic. No, not gonna use it. Or even anoxia, which means the decrease in oxygen. When am, when am I really gonna have a chance to use that? I'm not. Why am I learning this? But it's the weekend and I've got loads of words just floating up there in my brain. Floating up there doing brain things. This weekend though, I happened to be going on a camping trip to Valley Forge, Pennsylvania in the pouring rain in the winter. It was cold. We're all wet. I'm freaking soaked. And night befalls the campsite. And we each have to share a tent with someone else. That's how it works. Get some scout bonding in there. The kid I was staying with though, Adam, he was a bit weird. But we finally go to bed. Separate sleeping bags. It's not that type of camp. But it's cold. It is really cold. It is so freezing cold that my nipples have begun to form little tents inside my sleeping bag. Almost like they are on a nipple camping trip. But I was a pro camper, so this wasn't any ordinary sleeping bag that I was using. It was my mummy bag. Only the best campers had mummy bags. They were awesome. They were like wearing a hooded sweatshirt and pulling the drawstrings. The face hole gets really small, locks the heat right on in. But I was too tall for my mummy bag. They didn't quite make them in my size. So when I tried to get in the mummy bag, I would have my head kind of popping out that stupid hole. And it was freezing. I didn't want anywhere near that so hole. So I would have to scrunch in there and just go deeper and deeper into the depths of my mummy bag until eventually I was in a full on fetal position, just chilling there in the bag at the very end. And then I was asleep. But then somewhere around three in the morning, I was woken by what can only be described as a decrease in oxygen. I gasped for air, but it, it wasn't there. I was too far deep into the mummy bag. And then I did the only thing I knew how to do. I screamed at the top of my lungs like a little schoolgirl. So I continued to scream at the top of my lungs as I tried my best to just get out of this mummy bag. And then I hear Adam's voice and he goes, Evan. Evan, what's wrong? Why are you screaming? So I answered, Anoxia! I have Anoxia! What the heck is Anoxia? Didn't you study your vocabulary words? So I continued writhing and screaming, Anoxia! I have Anoxia! When Adam tells me, hey, let me get my light. But it's late. I didn't hear that. I heard, let me go get my knife. And I'm like, no, do not get your knife. This is my mummy bag. It costs more than your life. You cut my mummy bag, and I cut you! But by this time, I finally found my way to the drawstring in my mummy bag, and I increase the size of the hole, and I pop my head out. I take a breath. <gasps> I look over at Adam. I look at the tent door. And then I'm asleep. That's it. Boom! I'm out. A nightmare over. Right? Just end of story? That would've been nice. No, I'm awoken up about two minutes later. Someone's at the door of the tent. Scoutmaster. What in the hell is going on in here? What, us? Uh, there's, there's nothing going on in here. We're actually, we're, we were sleeping. You, you woke us up, coincidentally. Is there anything wrong? Go to hell to sleep, you two. So, I did. I slept like a baby that night. It was a great night. I was full of oxygen. A lovely sleep. However, the morning was quite interesting. It turns out my high-pitched girl of screams had woken up the entire campsite. And in the morning, everyone decided to put on their best Evan impersonation. Even Wayne, little 12 year old tenderfoot Wayne. Ah, I'm an Aksha. That's funny, Wayne. That was, that was just like me. Yeah, pretty funny. Yeah. But you know what? This story has a happy ending. Cause I taught that 12 year old the word Anaksha. It's like four years ahead of his time. Building vocabularies, Evan Edinger style. I'm pretty sure I'm still never gonna use that word again. Neighbor Ignite And night befalls the website. The website? I am camping on a website? Oh, my bed is not bouncy. 
Oh, God. A night befalls the website. It's not a website! Taught that 12 year old the word anuksha. Building his vocabulary, man. He's gonna get laid with that word one day. No, that's not a hot word. 